everyone, my name is Nick Flower Coach if you're from Udemy and welcome back to another Ads Talk video. Today we're going to be talking about what happened at my favorite street circuit, the uh, yes, not yes marina, the Marina Bay Singapore street circuit. Of course the Singapore Grand Prix. Now a few things to know up front, Red Bull was, uh, was um, well Red Bull told everyone that they shouldn't expect uh, a lot of pace from them because they know that they weren't going to be fast there and they were right so I've got the race report ready here like I always do and let's go and have a look I didn't watch it live I followed it along live uh, with the McLaren app and the F1 app because I was away um, but on Monday when I got back I watched it again so yeah let's go Carlos Sainz converted a pole position into a second career victory as the Spaniard held off the charge of Lando Norris and the Mercedes pair of Lewis Hamilton and George Russell who crashed on the final lap to take a well-earned win at the Singapore Grand Prix the first non Red Bull win of the season yeah, Russell basically hit the wall somewhere. Um, Lando also hit the wall at the same spot. Uh, but, yeah, they were both pushing so hard. Like, all four of them, they, they were pushing so hard. Um, and, you know, Singapore is one of the most um, physical challenging Grand Prix because of the, you know, the temperatures. Even though it's a night race, the humidity, it goes up, like, way up there. And the humidity, that's what makes it so hot. So, yeah. That's... Yeah. And they, they lose, like, around, like, 2 to 4 kilograms. Well, not kilogram, or grams, but 2 to 4 kilos during a race. As in... They lose that much body weight. Um, they do have some drinks in the car though. <laughs> so yeah. Anyway. Sainz kept off the lead, uh, kept hold of the lead at the start, but with Charles Leclerc having opted to start on the softs as opposed to those around him on the mediums, the Monegasc was able to jump ahead of Russell for second place. Then he navigated a safety car caused by Logan Sargent crashing into the barrier, but he was able to keep going, to keep a hold of the lead, as he later held off the challenge of Russell, Norris and Hamilton. But after Esteban Ocon, running 6 at the time, stopped on track with a suspected gearbox issue. Yeah, I think it's still, I think it was a gearbox issue, because, um... He was stuck in 6 and you could see him shift up. But it would just say six all the time. So yeah, he had a, he, probably a gearbox issue. Mercedes used a virtual safety car to stop their drivers. They done a double stack for some new medium tires, setting up a grandstand finish. Yeah. Well, normally I would continue reading, but like I'm gonna read it all uh, out and then it's like as it happened. So we're gonna go straight to as it happens. So, with the sun having set and the lights turned on, we were set for what was sure to be a fascinating evening in Singapore, with signs and Paul and Verstappen and Perez outside of the top 10. The paddock wondered if we would get the first non-Red Bull victory of the season. But, but, we're, but we were two drivers short on the grid, while Joe was standing in the pit lane with Alvatore making changes to his C43, uh, Stroll and Aston Martin had elected to withdraw from the uh, to had to withdraw the Canadian racer from Sunday's event, with him still suffering from the effects of his hefty qualifying crash. Basically, what happened? Um, Lance Stroll he had a massive crash. Um, that basically tore his entire car apart um fluids were coming out like i think if he went in with more speed he would have gone over he would have done a barrel roll 
that fast. Um, I, in my Discord, in the Formula One chat, um, I have put a link uh, to the clip of the crash. If you guys want to watch the clip, you don't have to, um, but it's there if you want to watch it, if you want to see what happens. He is okay though. Um, I'm pretty sure he's gonna drive n next weekend. Um, at least I hope he does, because that would mean that he is all right. Uh, but yeah, it, it was a big, big, big crash. I honestly don't know how much uh, G forces it is. Um, remind me for next after talk, I will uh, find out how many G forces that was. Because damn. Perhaps it was a bit too far onto the curbs, like in the uh, coming out of the penultimate corner, going into the last corner. I think that was that's probably it. That's probably what happened. A couple of minutes before the race start, the blankets were lifted, showing the tires each driver had opted to use at the first stint. Plenty selected the mediums, while the bloke, Sonoda, Joe, and Piastri chose the softs with the Red Bulls and Bottas on the hearts. Yes. It was a brilliant start for Ferrari as the lights went out. Sainz kept a hold of the lead and his teammate Leclerc was able to make uh, was able to jump ahead of Russell with the Mercedes driver also losing out to his teammate Hamilton, who made his way up from fifth to third, but not in the cleanest way possible. Is he gonna let me pass? exclaimed Russell on the team radio after Hamilton went off the track at turn one to gain the place. Hamilton obliged as he led Russell through in the next lap. Technically he had to get he had to let Lando pass too. And Lando was like really you know, like they just committed to it. They just committed to going off. Trying to like break late. And that was that was too big to see. Yeah. Sonoda's race was over as soon as it began on the first lap as he pulled over with a puncture, with replays showing a collision with Perez that, sh that caused the damage. That was not the only thing that Perez was involved with. Further back, Alonso and Ocon moved up to 6th and 7th after jumping ahead of Magnussen in the opening exchanges. With Verstappen up to 9th from P11, Alvaro Romeo then made their first stop of the day with Joe swapping his softs for hearts, which I still do not understand, because softs were pretty good. While Hamilton had given back the place to Russell, Norris now in 5th was not happy either, as he also came on the radio pleading for the Mercedes driver to give the position back, which he like they did. On lap 7, despite Magnussen's staunch defence, Verstappen dived down the inside of the Haas racer at turn 16 for 8th, while his Red Bull teammate Perez overtook Piastri for 13th into turn 1. At the front of the field, Leclerc was within a second of signs while Verstappen was showing good race pace to close in on Ocon, who was also looking to make his way past his former Alpine teammate Alonso for 6th. On lap 10, Leclerc was told to try and give a 3 second gap to Sainz at front, while the comfortable Spaniard came on the radio to say I could go forever at this pace, as he continued to set the fastest times of the evening. <coughs> Elsewhere, Haas had uh, not scored a point since Miami in May, but Magnussen and Hulkenberg were joined at the hip in 9th and 10th, respectively, while Gasly was right behind them, looking to pounce on any mistakes. I think Carlos is slowing down, said Leclerc on the radio, with the time sheets proving his point, as Lawson in 12th matched the pace of signs out front. Ricciardo was, was uh, present there though, but not racing. <laughs> Further back, Hamilton was beginning to reel in Norris in fourth as he set the fastest first sector on lap 14. 
On lap 18, Russell Sanchez told, uh, told him to keep the pressure on the Ferraris ahead in response to his question about what he needed to do to win the race. But then Piastri was told that there was a possibility that of rain hitting the track in five minutes. The rain did not hit. Luckily. I can, I, I can still remember how it was last year where they had to wait one entire hour before they were able to race. That was bad. And just as that happened, the yellow flags were waved as the camera spanned to turn 8, where Sargent had gone straight into the barrier. His front wing was now stuck under the w, uh, FW45 as he made his way back to the pits with pieces of carbon fibre spreading over the track as a result. That triggered the deployment of the safety car, with the top 7 drivers all deciding to dive into the pit lane for hard, some hard tyres. With the Red Bulls electing to stay out on their old halves. This meant Verstappen was up in second and Perez in fourth. In the pit stop chaos, both Leclerc and Hamilton ended up being delayed to avoid traffic. The pair were now in sixth and seventh, while Alonso was seen crossing the line at the pit entry, with race control investigating the incident. The order at the restart as the safety car peeled off at the end of lap 22 was Sainz, Verstappen, Russell, Perez, Norris, Leclerc, Hamilton, Alonso, Ocon and Bottas. Magnussen was 11th ahead of Gasly, Piastri, Lawson, Hulkenberg, Albon, Joe and Sargent. And Sainz played the restart perfectly as Russell attacked Verstappen while Norris looked to take Perez for fourth. Behind Leclerc looked to avoid colliding with Norris at turn 7, an incident or incident that forced him wide while Hamilton taking advantage with Hamilton taking advantage to move up to 6th. Russell eventually overtook Verstappen while Norris then got past Perez, with Hamilton now having a look at last year's Singapore Grand Prix winner. All while this was happening, Alonso was handed a 5 second penalty for crossing the line at the pit entry. He should not have done that. <clears throat> On lap 24, Norris made a move past Verstappen into turn 14, while Hamilton eventually got past Perez round the outside on the exit of turn 7. Although the 7 time world champion went on the curb and wide at the corner, the Red Bull driver, with the Red Bull driver asking for the, uh, for the position back. To be honest, yeah. At the front, Russell was incredibly racy as he looked to keep the pressure on signs for the first place, the Briton within half a second of the Ferrari driver. Elsewhere, Hamilton was within striking distance of Verstappen for fifth. Magnussen was then shown the black and white flag for forcing Gasly off the track, right before Hamilton put his good pace and his DRS advantage to, uh, to use to get past his 2021 20, title rival Verstappen for fifth, down the inside at turn seven, which was a pretty nice overtake, I got to admit. Hamilton, he, he might get the overtake award of the season, because... You know, give him a car that's less and he has to work for it and he will he will do wonders. I won't say I wouldn't say that if he still had the car from like twenty one. But like now that he's going used to new regulation cars, he's working for it. And he's making overtakes that I think even Michael Schumacher would be proud of. Yeah. Or well, let's just say he might even even Felipe Massa might be proud of those overtakes. Um, I don't know. I don't know. The right, the Red Bull dr uh, driver was then almost immediately under pressure from the clerk, who had 
early at Gold Pass, for us. <clears throat> it was good news for Ferrari as Leclerc made his way past the stop and then the inside at turn 7 as well. While signs began to eke out a gap. But it was less than positive for Red Bull, as Perez was now under pressure from Alonso for 7th. It's like driving on ice, complained Verstappen, as he ran a lonely race in 6th. Out front, Russell had closed the gap to signs once again, while the top 4, including Norris and Hamilton, were covered by just 3 seconds. Yes, you heard it right. 3 seconds. In a battle for 10th further back, Gasly was incensed by forcing off the track by force of the track by Magnussen as the two drivers went wheel to wheel through turns 7 and 8 with the Dane holding on for at least another lap yeah however the same corner on the next lap Magnussen went uh, ran off the uh, track handing Gasly 10th with replays showing the Haas racer going off at turn 1 and getting his tyres dirty before going off again, thus dropping him down to 16th. On lap 38, we were treated to some more excellent wheel-to-wheel -wheel action as Perez, Alonso and Ocon had a three-way fight for 7th. The Aston Martin racer lost out to Ocon, who moved up to 8th, while Perez stayed ahead as Gasly, now the fastest drive on track, closed in on the 3-0. On the next lap, Ocon showed his strong racing prowess as he forced Perez offline before making, uh, making way past turn 9. Late in the lap, Alonso and Gasly also both made their way past Perez, who boxed for mediums immediately. Perez then came out at the back of the field, with Verstappen also coming in a lap later for a set of the medium tyres as he came back out in, in 15th. The Dutch driver's pit stop pushed Pri Piastri up to 9th and Lawson up to 10th, with the Alvatore rookie looking to looking for his first point finish. Back at the front of the field, Sainz was still holding on to the lead, as Russell, having dropped back, began to close the gap back up. But back Alonso now in 7th, came on the radio to call, uh, to call his car undrivable. But there was to be unwelcome news for Ocon and Alpine, as a French driver, having been running in 6th, uh, stopped at turn 2 with smoke crumbing from his A523. No, no, shouted the French driver, slamming his fist against his, his steering wheel as virtual safe goal was deployed. Might I add, it was also his birthday. What is it with F1 drivers having a race on their birthday and then not finishing it? I mean, last year, last year in Sao Paulo, Brazil, Sunday the, 30, the 13th of November, Norris's birthday, he also freaking retired. Like, what, what's going on? Why are the drivers retiring on their birthday? Why are they retiring from a race on their birthday? Is, is this some kind of curse? That, like, you can't win a race on your birthday or something? I really do hope that Max Verstappen does not have a race on his birthday. I think it's just like next week it's just Japan I think like, I don't know <laughs> wait let me quickly check for you guys uh, let's have a schedule okay no not <laughs> none on his birthday <laughs> Still not one on my birthday though. We still don't know when the um when the sprint races are happening next year. So yeah. Hopefully
hopefully um, after the race or like in the same weekend as uh, Japan, so like this week, hopefully, or after Japan, we're gonna find out when spring first are, and in October, we're gonna find out if we are gonna go to Sandford. Didn't make, ma didn't mean to make it a song. Yet still, there was no movement in the pit lane apart from Albon, who came in for some mediums. Then came the Mercedes drivers as Russell and Hamilton double stacked for a set of the new medium tyres. This pair, uh, this dropped the pair down to fourth and fifth. But importantly, it gave them clean air as they looked to chase down the top three of Sainz, Norris and Leclerc. With 17 laps to go, but it was more bad news for Alonso, as a combination of his penalty and subsequent slow stop in the pits, in the pits, for softs dropped him to 15th. It was a 25.8 pit stop. You know, that's like a 10 second time penalty and a nose change. It's kind of like that. It's terrible. They should do the training McLaren does. We were then in for a grandstand finish with Russell and Hamilton starting to close the gap to the drivers ahead as the cameras pan to Ocon walking back to the pit lane without being saying a gearbox issue was to blame for his stoppage. Things then worsened for Alonso as he went off at turn 14 and dropped to the back of the field, while Verstappen was showing a good turn of pace on his mediums, moving past Hulkenberg for 9th, as he looked to rescue what had been a difficult evening. As we got to lap 50, the gap continued to close between the top 3 of the Mercedes drivers as Russell and Hamilton set the timesheets alight with green and purple sectors. Elsewhere, Lawson, running in 8th, was now coming under pressure from Verstappen. The stewards then revealed that they would be investigating a possible virtual safety car infringement by Perez and Albon after the race, as the timesheet showed that uh, while Russell was closing in on the clerk, his, mate, his teammate and mate, Hamilton, was even quicker. By lap 53, Russell and Hamilton were right up on the back of Leclerc as the leading Mercedes made his way past the Ferrari driver at turn 14. Hamilton then overtook the monocasque around the outside at turn 7 on the next lap, with Norris next on their list. Verstappen was also enjoying his end of the, uh, to the race as he was now up to 7th after overtaking Piastri while Bottas' race ended with hydraulics issue. Lots of people were like confused, like, Bottas retired? What? But he had hydraulics issue. Back at the front, Sainz was asking his team for information on the gap to Norris as Russell and Hamilton continued to close in. Russell and Hamilton were then struggling to get past Norris, sounds fair, who was being strategic, strategically offered some DRS to help by signs to to him to uh, to him stay ahead of the Mercedes pair. What? What is this sentence? So confused. But as we got to the final lap, we were given one last dramatic moment as Russell, looking to get past Norris, clipped the barrier on the in uh, on the entry. It turns in and went straight to the wall. That gives it to Hamilton. Third place, both signs held on for victory. Norris wound up second, while Leclerc held off the pacey Verstappen to take fourth place, with the championship leader co uh, recovering to fifth, uh, to finish fifth, his first time off the podium this season. Gasly was sixth, ahead of Piastri Perez Lawson. And Magnussen, after the stewards decided there was no further, further investigation necessary for the incident between Perez and Lawson. Outside of the points was Albon, Joe, Hulkenberg, Sargent and Alonso as Russell's crash left him joined with Bottas, Ocon and Sonoda as the four drivers unable to finish the race. Um, yeah, um... 
next weekend is um yeah it's uh thingy <laughs> um yeah uh japan but there's also uh there was also being given something um to Perez I heard um at least that's what I think um I think Perez got a penalty But I can't find if it was true. Uh. Asked what happened in the incident with Perez, Albon replied, optimistic move. Through my rear view mirror is an optimistic move as he almost t-boned me pretty much into turn 13. I got stuck and I couldn't get out. Had to reverse, face the wall and that was it really. I don't know what it is about. To be honest. Oh. Let me see what this is. Uh, it is... Perez and Albon collide on lap 58. Oh, let me turn the signs off. Yeah. It's basically what it said. Um, yeah, Perez was just being optimistic, sending it down the inside. Uh, Albon was able to see him, so yeah, and then basically ended his race. I think he did got like something for it. However, having made up to 10th, he was hit by Sergio Perez, an incident for which the Red Bull racer was handed a 5 second time penalty. Yes, okay, so now we find figure a figure uh, that one out. <coughs> So, next weekend, Suzuka. Um, if Red Bull scores more than 24 points than Ferrari, then they, uh, then they have to construct this title, I believe it was. So yeah, uh, we'll see how that goes. And yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, then please hit the like button. Also consider subscribing if you don't want to miss any more of this content. I really need to drink something because my throat is dry and I have to cough. But I don't want to cough on camera. Um, and yeah. That's it for me for now. And I shall see you guys in another video. Bye!